Helen Patricia Sharman was born on the 30th of May 1963. She is a chemist who became the first British astronaut, and in particular the first British cosmonaut, as well as the first woman, to visit the Mir space station in May 1991. Helen was born in Greneside, Sheffield, where she attended Greneside Junior and Infant School, later moving to Greenhill. After studying at Jordan Thorpe Comprehensive, she obtained a BSc degree in Chemistry at the University of Sheffield in 1984 and a PhD degree from Birkbeck University of London in 1987. She worked as a research and development technologist for GEC in London and later as a chemist for Mars, dealing with flavourant properties of chocolate. This later led the UK press to label her the girl from Mars. After responding to a radio advertisement asking for applicants to be the first British space explorer, Helen Sharman was selected for the mission ahead of nearly 13,000 other applicants. Project Juno was a private British space program as the United Kingdom did not at that time have a human spaceflight program. Well, that was until the UK joined the human spaceflight elements of the European Space Agency's exploration program in December 2012. And so a private consortium was formed to raise money to pay the Soviet Union for a seat on a Soyuz mission to the Mir space station. It wasn't, however, a matter of just turning up on launch day and heading off to space for a short break. Yeah, through 18 months training, the first three months was spent doing physical training and just learning Russian, because all of it was, was obviously done in, in the Russian language. Um, we started off on um, very sort of theoretical work, learning about astro-navigation and the theory behind space flight. Star City has been the home of the Yuri Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Centre since the 1960s. This would be where Helen would live, breathe and eat space for the foreseeable future. Part of her training included her first taste of weightlessness and she was asked how she prepared and whether it was an enjoyable experience. Part of the training actually, and I think all astronauts agree, is the weightless training where you fly a series of parabolic loops in an aeroplane and as this aircraft is just literally falling down the other side of this loop, rather like going over a humpback bridge, it's exactly the same principle. Your stomach feels almost weightless in a car uh, and your whole body feels weightless as this aircraft is falling because you're just falling inside. But really, um, a lot, so much was down to the medicals and the psychological tests um, and, and knowing that if you take somebody with um, a stable-ish personality and somebody who's reasonably healthy, in 18 months you're going to be able to train them up to you know, whatever it is they need to do. The Soyuz TM-12 mission, which included Soviet cosmonauts Commander Anatoly Artsabarsky and Sergei Krikalev, was due to launch on the 18th of May 1991 and last for eight days, with most of that time spent at the Mir space station. Sharman's tasks included medical and agricultural tests, photographing the British Isles and participating in a licensed amateur radio hookup with British school children. My experiments were in the end Russian experiments because the British side of, of well, the whole mission had, had financially failed. Um, but as a scientist, I think you're very you're keen to do experiments for any country. It would have been nice to have done some more British ones um, for me being a Brit. But, um, but in the end, you know, it's going to be used for the benefit of everybody. The big day had arrived and Helen, appropriately suited and booted, along with her now best friend, set off for the Soyuz rocket that would launch her and her comrades into space. Helen eventually reached the Mir space station, and so after two years, she was now officially in space. But at any time did she feel particularly nervous, or even scared? I don't think I, I ever felt nervous. The doctor said that during the docking, because of the problem that we had, my heart rate went up to 150 beats a minute, and typically when you're feeling weightless, it's down to about 50. So, um, you know, increased threefold. So I must have been, you know, I knew there was some sort of a problem, obviously, but... Um, you're never really scared, and I think it's just because your training's very good, you're scared of the unknown. And if the training has been so good, you really feel as though there's just no unknown left. And um, of course you contemplate catastrophes. Um, I knew full well that um, Challenger could happen all over again to us. 
But I also know full well that you know, crossing Piccadilly Circus on Saturday afternoon is probably more risky than launching to space. We haven't had enough manned space launches really to get a good statistical knowledge on what, what's, what's happening there. So um, very much you, um, you know it's a risk, but a risk you prepare to take. Art Sabarsky and Krikalev would spend the next five months on the space station, which would include eight spacewalks and to repair parts of Mir. As for Helen, her days literally flew by, and it was some time to be heading back to Earth. Coming back takes 45 minutes, really. Um, you have to, we spend a few hours, first of all, um, making sure that we're in the right orbit and the right distance away from the space station. Very sad, of course, to leave my then best friends um, behind when I came back to Earth. But uh, you know, as soon as you fire your retro rockets, we did that over South America. Um, that slows you down so that you're coming back through the atmosphere. Um, then the atmosphere itself slows you down. And now you've got a deceleration of about four and a half G. So the landing for the Russians is actually physically harder than the launch. But that doesn't last for very long. You've got um, then parachutes when the air gets thick enough, drogue chutes, and then increasingly large parachutes that open just to slow you down. But if, if the largest one opens to start with, it just gets ripped to pieces. Uh, and eventually, about a metre and a half above the ground, you've got retro rockets to soften the landing a bit. The crew landed safely and Helen was rescued from the capsule. Back in Sheffield, family and friends awaited news and her father received the call and spoke about his joy and relief. I think today was probably more tense than any of the other aspects. There are, there are three sort of um, critical stages. There's obviously the launch, the docking and the re-entry. Um, and I suppose the very fact that we were there for both of the other two made, made life a little easier for them from that point of view. But this morning was the most tense one of them. One last question I'm sure many want an answer to is, did she see or even does she believe in the existence of aliens? <laughs> um, the Russians would have loved me to have seen some sort of alien, I'm sure. Um, I didn't. Um, I didn't dream about anything like that. Um, but you know, it doesn't rule it out, does it? I believe there has to be um, some other intelligent life out in space. I mean, millions of stars. Um, it's very arrogant of anybody on Earth to believe that we are the only intelligent life form. You know, that it only exists on this planet. Um, whether or not we will ever see it um, is another matter. Whether or not it would ever want to see us is, is another question too. Helen Zumble begins from her little village of Grenoside to the out of this world home of space for at least a week is a remarkable story. Her love of chemistry and science certainly helped her achieve her goals but also her courage and determination led her to become one of Britain's greats. It's no fluke when you achieve the heights as Helen has, and I'm not just talking academically. Helen was and still is a reminder to all aspiring people that with hard work and a tad of luck, anything is achievable.